Good evening, friends, and welcome to Words of Hope. This is Pastor George, and uh, glad to be with you tonight. What a great day it was. The sun was out, just gorgeous, about 70 degrees, and uh, just one of those perfect, beautiful days. Glad we could share tonight. Looking forward to bringing a good word that will encourage you and give you strength. I hope that you had a good day and that you were blessed and highly favored. The question that I want to ask at the beginning of this message is this. Do you have any brothers and sisters in the natural, in the organic family, biologically, uh, if you will? Do you have any brothers and sisters? Just type in yes. If you want to tell me how many, that's okay. But uh, I'm just curious to see how many people that, that uh, watch this have siblings in their lives. Now, you know, the Bible tells us that when you and I accept Jesus Christ as the Lord of our lives, that God adopts you into his family. Now, that's amazing that the creator of the whole universe, the, 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 the God of everything, gave us Jesus Christ to die on the cross so that we could be forgiven. And if you accept the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and you believe in your heart, and you confess with your mouth that he's Lord, then the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 15, that God adopts you into, that, into his family. That's the real royal family. You know, I know there's a lot of talk about the royal family, especially the British royal family, but there is no royalty like the family of God. And God has sealed and signed your adoption certificate with the blood of Jesus Christ on that cross. And it says in Romans 8, 15 through 17, that because of that, you cry out, Abba, Father. In other words, you get to call him Father God. And that Abba is an intimate term that is used to describe a relationship between a, a child and their father. So God adopts each one of us. And uh, that's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 11 and verse 2, when the disciples asked him, how, how do we pray? And he said, when you pray, pray this way, our Father which art in heaven. And so Jesus wanted his followers to begin to see God as their Father. That's just amazing. It's amazing that God would, would, would even uh, consider you and I being sons and daughters of his, his. And so listen to me. If Jesus Christ is my Lord and God adopts me into his family and I become his son, he's my father. And if that happens to you and you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and, and God adopts you into his family, that makes you his son or daughter. So that means we're siblings. You and I are brothers and sisters in Christ. Important to realize. I, I think if more Christians understood that theology, understood that concept that that we would work out things a lot more than than we do. First John two nine says, if you don't love your brother, that's in Christ, then you're walking in darkness. And so God has said that each one of us have to accept Jesus, be adopted into His family, and then look at each other and receive each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Now that means that we have to love each other, but it also means that we have to forgive each other because we're family. Sometimes you have to forgive me. Sometimes I have to forgive you. But forgiveness is a big part of family relationships. Think about this with your own biological siblings. I'll bet you there have been times if you have brothers and sisters that you have hurt their feelings and they have had to forgive you to maintain that relationship. And there are times that, that they have hurt your feelings and you have to forgive them. That's all part of being family. And, and sometimes family they do, we do hurt each other. But instead of running away, instead of running away from each other, we should work it out. And it's the same way in the church. The church is made up of a bunch of believers that are all family. Think about that. You've got older brothers and sisters. You have younger brothers and sisters in the church. And, and we are all family. And in, and in the same way that we have to love and forgive each other in our biological family, we do that and need to do that in the church family, e probably even more so. And, and yet there are a lot of Christians that harbor bitterness and unforgiveness and hurt and anger towards another Christian, and then they walk away. And, and you know, we're so much better. We are so much better if we don't walk away and we stay the course we stay with family, we work things out, we forgive each other, we love each other, and we move on. 
But, you know, if we run away from each other, we never have a chance to process stuff. We never have a chance to work out the stuff that caused us to have our feelings hurt. And so I, I just really pray. And I and I prayed that God would give me the ability to never walk away from a brother or sister in Christ. And I've told a friend of mine a while back, I said, you're my brother. You're, you're we're, we're in this together. And I will never stop uh, looking at you as a brother in Christ. I will always love you. And if this relationship ends then it's never going to be me. You need to know that. There is nothing you can do to make this end. But if it ends, it's because you just chose to walk away from me. And I think it's really important for us, my friends, to develop that kind of relationship with each other. We are brothers and sisters. You know, uh, Russ Taff, many years ago, uh, wrote a song, and, and some of the words go, you're my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. And together, we will work until he comes. Together. The operative, operative word is together. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, that all of us that accept Jesus as Lord and Savior would, would, would begin to see each other as brothers and sisters in Christ and, and begin to love each other and forgive each other. You know, and, and we're going to have plenty of opportunity to forgive each other because it's that's just the nature of human interact, interaction and interpersonal relationships. But you know what? We're stronger and we're better. And, and if you could just begin to see that other Christian as your brother or your sister, it might change your, your outlook on, about them. It might, it might change how you're going to, to deal with them or work with them. It's important. You know, at the, at the church I pastor, Florence Foursquare Church, we have a motto. And, and it's kind of our mission statement. And it goes like this. It says, Florence Foursquare Church is a place where people become friends and friends become family. Because when you become family, it's blood. It's blood is thicker than water. And we've got the blood of Jesus that makes us family members. God never turns your, his back on you. He's your dad. He's your Abba. He, he adopted you and he doesn't turn his back on you. And, and, and he wants us to have that same relationship with each other. Well, we don't just so easily turn our backs on each other. Because it, first of all, it gives a bad message to the non-Christian world about who we are. But, but I just really pray that everyone that's going to be watching this over the next few days would just begin to understand that God's your father and that every person that accepts Jesus Christ as Lord is your brother or your sister. And, and, and so if you begin to see it that way, it, God will give you the grace to maintain a relationship with them and forgive them and to love them. It's not always going to be easy. I'm sure that I've done some things to my biological brothers that, that, that wasn't easy for them to forgive me, but they did. And we have a relationship. And I remember one of them many years ago, we hadn't talked in quite a long time. And I called him one day and I said, listen, we're brothers. It's got to end. We, we, need to, we need to maintain our relationship with each other. We need to start hanging out with each other. And we did. And we've been doing it for years and years now. And we're very close. But sometimes we wait on the other person. We think it's their job to make things right or to, or you know, to ask to be forgiven. It's never our other, uh, never our brother or sister's job. It's always ours. It's always ours. As far as, as far as it lay, lies with you, you be the peacemaker. You be the one that maintains that brother sister relationship, and uh, you're better off for doing it. And God will just bless you richly. And so I, I just want to say, if, if you have anything against a brother in Christ, forgive them. Even if they don't ask, just forgive them. And you're so much better off. And if it's possible, work it out with them. Love them, forgive them, and and, and figure out how to, how to maintain a relationship with them as a brother or sister in Christ. Because think about this. They're going to heaven and you're going to heaven. And I don't think God wants brothers and sisters that are fighting with each other to be in heaven. Because there's no fighting in heaven. No fighting in heaven. So we are family. We are family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. You're my brother. You're my sister. So take me by the hand. And together, see, when we're together, we accomplish unbelievable things. When you and I are together in Christ, uh, we make a statement to the non-Christian world that the love of the Lord Jesus is bigger than anything we deal with here uh, in, in this world. And I think that's one of the reasons why the, the Lord... Um, Put, put a church together that, you know, churches are a group of people that get together and they're a group of people that are just all family. Think about this. Next time you go to a building where they gather in Jesus name, we call it a church service. It's really a family reunion. 
Every single person in there that believes in Jesus is your brother or your sister. And, and so um, if you begin to see him that way, instead of just somebody that goes to your church, I think it'll help you appreciate them more. And, 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 and part of church is people learning how to interact with each other, how to care for each other, how to love each other, how to support each other, how to forgive each other. And, and that's why Jesus said, uh, it, it's important for you to get together. Matter of fact, he says in Hebrews chapter 10 and in, and in verse uh, 25, it says, do not stop meeting together as some are in the habit of doing it. Sometimes people stop meeting because, well, they, they get upset. They got their feelings hurt. They're mad about something. And when we do that, we're the one that's hurt. And so he says, don't stop meeting together. And as you see the day approaching, do it more often. We need to have more and more family reunions. And, and, and part of our church is, I just love that, that as we come into the building, people interact. They don't just interact with the same people they know from week to week, but they reach out and try to interact with other people and new people and, and get to know them and make them feel like they're part of the family. Because we like people to go from being outsiders to insiders quickly. And, and so we start church late because of that. We let people just continue to share and laugh together and cry together and pray together and, and get to know each other. Because that's an extremely important part of family reunion. That we eat together, we worship together, we we study the word together, and uh, because the Lord has shown me that that we're powerful when we see each other as a, a as an army of brothers and sisters, as an army of people that love Jesus and love each other, and we are family. And if, and and I just think if you're looking for a church where where you could become part of the family. I, and you live in the Florence area. I invite you to come visit with us. We, we're the Four Square Church. We're on Highway 101. We're right next to the A&W. We meet at 10 o'clock on Sundays. And uh, and you'll be blessed. We're, I, I, I know that I've heard many, many, many times when people come visit us, they've never been in a church like that. I had somebody say to me uh, just two weeks ago that visited our church. And they said, we've been to many churches, but we have never been in church so full of love like this one in our lives. And that made me feel so good as a pastor because that's what we want, a family that love each other and care for each other. So we meet at Sundays at 10. You're welcome. Come as you are. Be blessed. You will be blessed. I know that. If you'd like to be part of a Bible study that we have, it's Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And then also um, we uh, you can go to YouTube, Pastor George Pagel on YouTube. I have a whole library of sermons and teachings that I have there. But uh, uh, The Lord just put this on my heart to, to share with people over the... Uh, over the next few days about family and how we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. We're all different and we look at life differently. I, my, I, I'm the old, I'm the oldest of four brothers. And I, and, and um, I, I tell you, we all look at things differently, but I love all my siblings. I love them with all my heart. And, and it doesn't matter if somebody looks at things the way they, that you do or the way that I do, as long as Jesus Christ is the Lord of their lives. And so I just pray that God would bless you and that I know over the next few days, lots and lots of people, hundreds of people will watch this. And, and, and I pray every one of them would just be touched and motivated to experience God as their adopted father and every believer as their brother or sister in Christ. And so may God rich you, uh, bless you richly and uh, glad we could share. And you have a great day, a great evening, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon in the name of Jesus. Amen.